to the third and final episode looking at public opinion on a special video edition of By the Numbers on the smartoncrime.ca blog. My name is Anthony Piscitelli and I am Supervisor Planning and Research with the Waterloo Region Crime Prevention Council. Over the last two episodes, we explored attitudes towards the criminal justice system and how these attitudes help to shape public policy. Today, we want to bring political influence into our discussion, showing that not only do politicians react to public opinion when shaping policy, as we previously discussed, but also to show that they help shape public opinion. Let's begin by using an example to illustrate how attraction and support for a political party can help shape how people see the world. Over the past four years, there's been a lot of discussion about crime rates. Police reported statistics show crime rates on the decline, but leading members of the Conservative Party of Canada have argued crimes not reported to police have been increasing. When we look at public opinion questions asked by the survey firm Embaronics over the past five years, we see there is an increase in the number of people that think crime is on the decline. However, if we take a closer look at the number separating out supporters of different political parties, we see that less supporters of the Conservative Party think crime is declining compared to the other parties. This shows political party identification helps shape how we see the world around us. The second way politicians can influence political opinion is by creating public policy. Enveronix also asks a survey question comparing crime prevention approaches to law enforcement approaches. The question asks, quote, as you know, governments today are limited in the amount they can spend in all areas. When it comes to crime and justice, do you think the major focus should be on law enforcement, which includes detecting crime and punishing lawbreakers? or crime prevention, which includes education and programs to prevent crime and reduce risks. We see on the chart in 2002, support for crime prevention stood around 60%, then it declined and rose again. These results need to be viewed with a bit of caution, as we are only working with four data points, and a longer term would give a better sense of if this is a trend or a blip. However, these results do fit well with the theory discussed in the previous episode. You'll recall, I argued for a straightforward relationship between public policy and public opinion, where past public policy and past public opinion influence current public opinion. Over the last six years, there has been significant discussion about harsher sentences leading to some policy changes. The theory argues these changes would lead to a corresponding change in public opinion. Individuals who in the past have supported harsher sentences seem to have reacted to these policy changes by saying, okay, we're happy to see you focused on law enforcement. We thought that needed it, but now we want to see you focus on the other side. What can you do about crime prevention? So in short, public opinion has a complex relationship with public policy decisions. While attitudes matter in shaping public policy, politicians and public policy itself can help shape public opinion. Well, that's all the time we've got for this episode of By the Numbers. Today we looked at stats and opinion polls that tell us what people think of the criminal justice system. I hope that you've learned something, or that you've at least found these episodes interesting. We'd love to hear your comments. You can post below this blog, or send us a message on Twitter at Preventing Crime, or on our Facebook page. We'd also like to hear from you on what you'd like us to cover in a future episode. So send us a message and we'll see what we can do. And thanks again for joining us for By the Numbers.